are back at and we are back as I have not set up the names of the players yet before I have started. So we have Mick Groover. Mick Grouper. Mick Giver. Versus Jeff on Wurzathopters again. I don't remember what. Don't remember what deck it is. Oh, that's right. Death and a good old D and T. I know, I know, a good old D and T. D and T. Got that good old death by taxes. Welcome to the American government, boys. Playing some, uh, playing some good things tonight. We are. All right. Look at these two trying. To, they're trying to do something funky with the dice. I think they're doing odds and evens. I am not. I am not sure how they just decided to go first, but whatever the case, MacGyver is going first. That will be. Got it. So they they had the most complicated way of deciding, but. But that's okay. We don't discriminate against uh, people's uh, choosing of going first here at Snapcasters. However you want to decide who goes first, you just do you, bud. The Giver looking at his second hand. Things over, flicking cards like a pro, putting one on bottom, and he's ready to go. Turn one got Stepmom, and passes over to Jeff. Jeff playing land, eventually playing land, and getting out the wishing well. Be scry to. Looking like he's going to put one on top and one on bottom, and then pass the turn back. MacGyver <laughs> playing the Thalia, starting the taxes early, getting, pulling that off against Jeff and getting a... Uh, making him have to pay taxes on his artifacts or on, uh, on his uh, Doctor Foundry. It's going to slow him down drastically. The difference between paying two mana and three mana in a game or having to pay more when uh, when you were had, had a certain skill, had a certain game plan that in your hand where you could really speed off and just dominate the game fast. It's slowing that game down. It's what's really going to keep MacGyver in this. Alright, he's going to be playing that Goblin Engineer. Probably going to be grabbing a sword. His hand still debating. We see that he has the foundry and the sword up there. He's going for the foundry, so he probably has a sword in hand. He can't make out his hand too well, but it does look like he has a sword in hand. 
I'll be able to use. I'll be able to really leverage that with using the uh, Goblin Engineer. <laughs> Next turn, he might have infinite mana, but he will have combo on the board. But MacGyver takes care of it with a good old path to exile. Combo will be shut off for another turn. Jeff passing the turn back to MacGyver. MacGyver. He has his hand. <laughs> Playing land for turn. Getting in for two. Getting in for two. Instead of trading with the Emery like Jeff was joking about. And then plays the Archon and passes. So now all non-basics that Jeff controls are going to enter the battlefield tapped, and he can only cast one spell per turn. He's not going to shut off the uh, Thopter combo, or the Thopter Foundry combo. But it will slow down everything else that Jeff is trying to do. See that he has an Urza in hand. Urza does seem like it's going to be the play that he makes, but he's going to look one more time. Give it some real thought. Then just play the Urza anyways. Just play the Urza. There it is. He plays the Urza. Gets a blocker, sits out there. Just sits and looks pretty. Well, not even pretty, but... It sits there. And now he has now he's able to tap his artifacts for mana, which effectively puts him at three blue mana or two blue mana and a or a, one blue mana, one of any color of his choosing with the, the chromatic star. So, MacGyver is going to be playing his uh, apparition. He's going to be getting rid of the Urza, which it's just large enough, which it's uh, just within range to do. Jeff's going to be activating the. He's going to be floating a blue. Swinging in the air for two. Bringing Jeff down to 12. 
Archon really putting in work here. Never again. All right. We see the ensnaring bridge coming down over on Jeff's side. Jeff only having one card. <laughs> Flicker wisp. Flickering. Flickering the ensnaring bridge. He can't help. Exile another target. Exile another target. Permanent Flicker Wisp says. Comes back in. End of turn. It's going to be swinging in with the most of the team. Jeff looking for a good block here. It's going to be taking four. He gives his mom protection, says go. Jeff's turn, or in the, uh, MacGyver's turn, Jeff looking to blue for in the chromatic and my brain is absolutely fried. It is 9.30 at night. I've been working all day, and I am trying my best to, to speak magic right now, but I could really go for another energy drink. If anyone wants to send me one of those, send me money for one of those, or uh, give, me, give me money for a Starbucks coffee, I would greatly appreciate it. My, uh, my Venmo account is... Uh, uh, what? Oh, sorry guys, apparently I can't give away my Venmo account and ask for coffee. Zach is uh, not not okay with that. Uh, but if anyone wants to buy me coffee sometime and you live in Arizona or you are, you know, just wanting to buy me coffee, that would be greatly appreciated. Because, man, I could really go for a fucking cup right now. Anyways, back to the game. We see that the game has not progressed much as these two are... <coughs> As these two are still trying, uh, as MacGyver is still stuck behind an ensnaring bridge, and Jeff is hoping that the ensnaring bridge sticks around enough. And just long enough to win in the game. Definitely having those two power creatures um, of with uh, with death and taxes is going to be really strong against that. And snaring bridge as long as Jeff does uh, keeps two cards in, or more in hand. All right, taking f Jeff's taking four, and then going back to his turn. All 
far right. Jeff finally taking care of that apparition and gets a 4 4 token. Alright, MacGyver. Handless and wondering what he. What hope there is left for him, but with a larger board than uh, than Jeff, all Jeff has to do is play two cards, and MacGyver won't be able to attack him. But looking at his hand, he has three, and he has an Urza and a sword. And I can't see what the last one is. Urza's sword. And it looks like your mom, but. Um, your, um, I can't really tell. Uh, I've stopped looking. Um, anyways, he plays the, he goes to play the Urza and gets another one of his constructs. These constructs right now are four fours? Yeah, four fours. So he has an army of four fours and then a, uh, a one four. Here. He moves to MacGyver's turn. We still see that Jeff has two cards in hand. MacGyver looking at... Like Jeff and MacGyver giving each other perfect information on, uh, of graveyards here, giving a little exchange of information just to make sure that all is, you know, no one can cast anything, no one can uh, pull any shenanigans from graveyards right now. Then. MacGyver really analyzing the board, taking his time, making, thinking of the right play. Activates Field of Ruin. It's going to be blowing up the red source. And we have a fail to find on Jeff's side. MacGyver, of course, Mono White, can't really, uh, you know, can't really fail to find unless he's already searched through, uh, like, what is it, 20 different planes? Swings two in the air, brings Jeff to two. Puts him on a one turn clock, Jeff. Drawing. <laughs> it's not going to help him in this situation. But, but we do still see that he has the sword. And a emery. Don't think he'll be able to buy another turn here. Doesn't look like it with what he has. But if he 
just plays one card out of his hand, just one card, he will be able to win. Mm, yeah, he's going to. So he plays the sword. Now, now MacGyver will not be able to attack because Jeff only has one card in there. That one card, of course, being Goblin Engineer, who was so desperate to uh, keep that red source around. And the red source that he found now it comes in tapped. So Jeff is activating Urza. He's going to be shuffling his library, then uh, activate, then uh, looking at the top card or revealing the top card, and, uh, and he can cast it until the turn without paying its mana cost. Which, ooh, ooh. Choosing not to play Hope of Girapu. Where is that <laughs> shadow speed? No, that's a hope of gear. Uh, Again, exiling Urza. Jeff in a really sticky situation here. At two life, MacGyver at 20. One card in hand, so MacGyver isn't able to attack, which is buying Jeff all the time in the world. But how much longer will that last? Jeff. Jeff, looking to activate Emery. Doing a little bit more math, look, thinking that he found, might have found a play here. Bringing back the Thopter Foundry. Thopter Foundry. <laughs> Thopter Foundry entering the battlefield as. Um, will he? Alright. So he's going to be. <laughs> So MacGyver is going to keep shooting off these uh, his red source. All right, so so MacGyver did mess up there. He uh, shoots off the red source or shoots off the fetch land in uh, response to yeah, it fizzles. So he fizzling MacGyver's effect. I was sort of looking over. Um, sort of looking over at that one to make sure that it, he could, uh, couldn't do that. So, so the guy we're playing is Aether Vial as his one card per turn. He's going to make, Jeff is going to make a few copters, or a few copters, a few thopters end of MacGyver's turn. So that one card in hand, he will be able to swing over with uh, with his 1-1 one -one thopters. Jeff may have just got himself back in this game. The surprise comeback victory from one, or from, not from one, from two mana. He's, oh my god, I am, 
I am totally butchering this. I am sorry, guys. My brain is absolutely exhausted right now. Let me try to find words. He's tapping to to play the goblin engineer. He is trying to make a comeback from two life. He gained one life off the th off the activation of foundry foundry to make uh, two thopters last turn. Net gain. He got down to one life there for a second, which was pretty pretty scary for him. Jeff also no longer has to worry about that uh, Archon of Amiria or having multiple cards in hand because of the Ensnaring Bridge. Since he has plenty of flying blockers now. Well, I guess that's not exactly accurate. He does need, uh, because they are blue and not colorless which is a very big distinction. The Thopters that are made off of Thopter Foundry are blue, not colorless, so activating uh, Stepmom of Ruins will be able to uh, give his Archon of Mario or Flicker Wisp if Jeff gets too big of a hand, just be able to tap him to give him protection from blue and swing in for the game. Uh, Jeff has one in hand. Don't know what MacGyver has. But he just looks at it, sets it aside rather quickly, and that's back to looking at Jeff's side of the board. <laughs> Path to exiling the Goblin Engineer. That's a. It's a good call, but I don't think that's going to save MacGyver the game. Jeff may have just made an epic comeback of all epic proportions. Insane. Insanity, sir. This game. Yeah. Look at him, just send him over to the side. He now has total of six Thopters. And they, but remember, they are blue, so if at any time he has more than three cards in hand, he could potentially just lose the game. Oh, Engineer's Explosive on one. It's, that'll take care of his Mother of Ruins, or his Stepmother of Ruins. Either that or we just call her Hot Mom. Dad side girl, dad side chick. There's there's a bunch of different names you, you could give the card. But either way, I don't remember the actual card's name. It is Stepmom, Hot Mom, anything except whatever whatever it's really called. Two of the Thopters and giving a protection from uh, from blue. Uh, the Flicker Wisp does. See more activations there at the end. And to make even more Thopters and passes the turn. Yeah, Jeff is quickly coming back now. We see that he's at 11 life and that MacGyver is at 16, being at 20 just mere seconds ago. And just like that, MacGyver may or may MacGyver may have just won the game, giving. But most importantly, he has to give. He has to give him protection from blue before he swings. <laughs> I 
So MacGyver is... Yeah. yeah, MacGyver... MacGyver just loses. Yeah, he, yeah, he just wasn't able to get there. If he would have... Yeah, that was a great comeback from Jeff. By far one of the best games of the night. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate your viewership. As always, we'd uh, like it if you give us a little follow if you enjoy uh, enjoy what you've seen tonight. Moving over to the sideboard, both of these players are going to be sideboarding up pretty heavily. This looks like a, uh, a real grindy grind fest here. So the grindier the grind, the better. Oh man, just flashes off, just flashes off those three cards Jeff does. Jeff being like a, uh, like a stripper over here, uh, he, uh, just flashes us the cards. <laughs> Jeff just showing the goods, really nailing it. Looking things, looking over this main board, pulling some stuff out, seeing what he can do to really speed, to make this game favor, swing in his favor. As you saw, it really took him a minute there. He almost lost the game, probably, his knuckles were turning white, he was gripping that table so hard, he's shuffling his cards around. What can, what cards are, is he going to take out to make him have a better chance at being taxes? On the other side of the table, MacGyver is definitely, he definitely knows what he, what he needs for this match. Being able to slow down that thopter even more, get, have more ways to take care of uh, take care of Urza when he hits the board. So we're definitely going to be seeing a lot more removal from the Gyra's side. The store has started to quiet down since it is almost 10 o'clock here and everyone is tired and still playing magic. It's uh. They're on that uh, on that magic high, as it were, you know, where you've just been sitting at the table for six, seven hours, and you just have nothing but pure motivation left to keep you keep you running. Well, if you haven't ever been uh, that addicted to magic, then uh, I don't. We're probably not the channel for you. We're some pr we're pretty hardcore like that, you know. Really push our players to 2 a.m. Get them right there at the brink of insanity, and then bring them back. Alright, to the game, we have MacGyver playing that turn one step mom. Watching Jeff as he plays that Mox Amber before playing, before playing Land. Shocking and yeah. See, you see that he has bolts in him. MacGyver tapping for two, playing in Thalia. In response, taking out the Jeff's taking out the stepmom. Definitely going to be a strong play to make sure that uh, MacGyver doesn't have protection from uh, any of Jeff's removal. Jeff passing the turn after playing a trial. MacGyver playing Field of War. Swinging in for two. 
Taking Jeff down to 16. MacGyver activates Field of Room, taking out the Triome. Gonna start taking out that land base early on, knowing that Jeff doesn't have a whole ton of bases. Jeff, looking over his hand, we see that he has another land. He's going to be playing said land. Taking a moment to really think things over, kind of dragging it out if you'd ask me, but really giving it a moment to th think through his best plays. Something you want to see in a mad in a good magic player. Taking their time, really thinking things through, not just throwing sh noodles at a wall. MacGyver going to combat, attacking for two and playing a land. See if Phyrexian Revoker going to be naming Urza probably. What is that name? Name Thopter Foundry, which is even better. <laughs>
Sorry about that, folks. Uh, we had a camera malfunction on us. We did it really, really quickly. Tried to uh, restore the feed as fast as possible. Uh, you didn't miss too much. You missed an anger of the gods wiping away MacGyver's side of the board as well as most of Jeff's. Uh, exiling a lot of a lot of good things. You see MacGyver has his apparition. And so like, I'm so used, I'm almost never bold now because I'm like, yeah, I can play this. Yeah. But like everyone's like, no, I do need a mold that like, no, I can play this. Though. Having seven cards is better than six, dude. And then there's like a high level people who are like, no, statistically, it's not talking about that feels right. Jeff, moving the combat, swinging in for grand total of seven. Guyver at twelve. Jeff is at twelve, so tie game ball. Look at the board, it definitely doesn't feel like a tie game right now. Jeff really has the momentum upswing. Is making the best of it. I think it's just one of those cards that keeps other cards in check. So that's why it's, it's strong, but if it didn't exist, it would help be stronger. I don't think I got a response. Do you guys get the solution? I mean, I have a little bit of a decree of silence. I have a little bit of a decree of silence. combo is online. And he is pumping out the Thopters. <laughs> Second main phase. Throwing out a revoker named Thopter. Or Thopter Foundry. Jeff waiting 
Jeff Sh says he has a response. Are you waiting for his response, Jeff. Jeff, what are you doing? Jeff, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know not to do that. Jeff is looking at that fatal push like it's like he is. But instead goes with the Thopter Foundry activation, letting the Phyrexian Revoker result. See that he holds up the black mana for a fatal push. Foundry, but as we do know that he in the turn that Jeff does have the fatal push. Fatal push should be enough to just Yeah. That was enough. Then it takes uh takes Jeff to the win but in uh, game two. Putting Jeff as our undefeated victor at three and O tonight. And thank you everyone for what, who tuned in tonight. We appreciate your viewership. Um, to anyone watching, and have a good night. Uh, golly, I'm gonna need some caffeine to get home tonight, guys. Everyone, stay safe out there. Be, be kind, love each other, all that stuff. Play good games of magic. Don't play stacks, pl be a burn player, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, do it. Inspirational quote insert here. Thank you all for watching and have a good night.